Welcome to Glorified Message. Join us today as we unravel the hidden treasures of the Word for our understanding, edification and growth. In part 1 we discussed how Daniel 9 26 details another prince to come after Christ. In the New Testament, Christ also identifies this individual as the prince of this world. In today's video, we will be aiming to identify if this prince is a historical figure or whether he's about to emerge on this scene. The question is, who is this prince who Christ will use to destroy the city and the sanctuary? In part one, we mentioned how many theologians today identify him as Antiochus Epiphanes who captured Jerusalem in 167 BCE. Now although he did some pretty horrific things and is seen as a foreshadow of the man of sin, he came before Christ and couldn't possibly be this prince to come and Christ also established the prince comes after him. And due to some translations, readers also speculate the people of the prince as the Romans in 70 AD. Now although the Romans destroyed the city led by Titus, the siege of Jerusalem only lasted a mere 5 months. Whereas the trampling of the city mentioned in Daniel 9.27 and Revelation 11 verse 2 says that the trampling of the city done by the Gentiles would last for 42 months. So again, who fulfills this historically? The prince to come may not be a historical figure after all. Perhaps we can find some clues to the time period when this individual will come in the book of Ezekiel 38 and 39. Now that we've established that the prince to come is most likely not a historical figure, we can now shift to Ezekiel 38 and 39 which gives us insight into the precise timing of when this prince would appear and the nations that will follow him. The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, set your face against Gog of the land of Magog the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. Consider these points to note down. Gog is an individual who rules the land of Magog, which is today Turkey. God addresses kings along with the lands they rule. For example, King of Babylon, Prince of Persia, Pharaoh of Egypt. These are rulers who rule a landmass. Another interesting fact is that Gog is a chief prince. We know that Michael was a principality who protects Israel. In Daniel chapter 12, Michael is mentioned as one of the chief princes. So Gog would be a man, but also a principality. Prophesy against him and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. I am against you Gog, chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. I will turn you around, put hooks in your jaws, and I'll bring you out with your whole army, your horses, your horsemen, fully armed, and a great horde with large and small shields, all of them brandishing their swords. Persia, Cush, Put, will be with them, all with shields and helmets, also Goma, with all its troops, and Beth Togama from the far north with all its troops, many nations with you. Get ready, be prepared, you and all the hordes gathered about you, and take command of them. God is going to put hooks in the mouth of Gog, as if he was some type of giant sea creature, and his whole army with him. What creature do we see in scripture who emerges from the sea with his whole army? We will further elaborate on this and why it's important as we continue further into the passage. After many days, you will be called to arms. In future years, you will invade a land that has recovered from war, whose people were gathered from many nations to the mountains of Israel, which had long been desolate. They have been brought out from the nations and now all of them live in safety. Reading this verse gives us an understanding of the state of Israel before Gog and his armies attack. We are told that he will invade the land of Israel in future years. He will invade a land that has recovered from war, 
to a people who have been gathered from many nations back into Israel to a land that has been long desolate. Gog will attack Israel when Israel has been regathered from war. Israel became a nation again only in 1948 after Nazi Germany and World War II and since that time they have been regathering and inhabiting the land that has been long desolate in fact for 2000 years. You and all your troops and many nations with you will go up advancing like a storm you will be like a cloud covering the land. Continuing on to verse 14 and 15 it shows us that God is the one who's bringing Gog against his land. Gog will also come from the far north. Israel is always the central point geographically, so north of Israel would be Turkey today. Therefore, son of man, prophesy and say to Gog, this is what the sovereign Lord says. In that day, when my people Israel are living in safety, will you not take notice of it? You will come from your place in the far north, you and many nations with you, all of them riding on horses, a great horde, a mighty army. You advance against my people Israel like a cloud that covers the land. In days to come, Gog, I will bring you against my land, so the nations may know me when I'm proved holy through you before their eyes. This is what the Sovereign Lord says, you are the one I spoke of in the former days by my servant the prophets of Israel. At that time they prophesied for years that I would bring you against them. We have to keep in mind that in Daniel 9 25 to 26 Christ is the one who's bringing the prince to come against his city Jerusalem and he shall destroy the city and the sanctuary with the prince that is coming. God will do this in order to demonstrate his righteousness in the sight of all the nations who would be witnessing God's judgments on Gog and his hordes. God spoke about this individual through all the prophets saying he will bring Gog against his land in future years. In the next few verses, we will be demonstrating that God himself will come in the person of Christ physically in response to Gog's attack on Israel. This is what will happen in that day. When Gog attacks the land of Israel, my hot anger will be aroused, declares the Sovereign Lord. In my zeal and fiery wrath, I declare that at that time there shall be a great earthquake in the land of Israel. The fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the beast of the field, every creature that moves along the ground, and all people on the face of the earth will tremble at my presence. There will be a huge earthquake and every creature will tremble at God's presence. We know that the Father judges no one, but has permitted all judgment to the Son. Isaiah 52 talks about this glorious return. When the Lord returns to Zion, they will see it with their own eyes. Burst into song of joy together, you ruins of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord will lay bare his holy arm in the sight of all the nations. And all the ends of the earth will see the salvation of our God. Christ will come once again and land on the Mount of Olives where he ascended. I will execute judgment on him with plague and bloodshed. I will pour down torrents of rain, hailstone and burning sulphur on him and all his troops and on the many nations with him. And so I will show my greatness and my holiness and I will make myself known in the sight of many nations. They will know that I am the Lord. Moving on to Ezekiel 39, on the mountains of Israel you will fall, you and all your troops and the nations with you, 
I will give you as food to all kinds of carrion birds and to the wild animals. I will make known my holy name among my people Israel. I will no longer let my holy name be profaned, and the nations will know that I, the Lord, am the Holy One in Israel. It is coming. It will surely take place, declares the Sovereign Lord. This is the day I have spoken of. Did you catch that? Let's delve into the importance of the statement, the Holy One in Israel. And why is this important? We find in other similar passages, the phrase, the Holy One of Israel. We see this in Isaiah 45, 11, 2 Kings 19, 22, and Psalms 71, 22, and other numerous passages. However, in this case, God himself will be physically in Israel. God also says, this is the day I have spoken of. This only refers to the day of the Lord. Continuing on from Ezekiel 39. When I have brought them back from the nations and have gathered them from the countries of their enemies, I will be proved holy through them in the sight of many nations. Then they will know that I am the Lord their God. For though I sent them into exile among the nations, I will gather them to their own land, not leaving any behind. This passage implies that Israel would once again be taken into exile by Gog and his hordes. They will take them as captives into the surrounding nations, and Christ will come back and regather Israel again, going into the countries that invaded them led by Gog, and he will bring them back into their own land. Only then will it be said, The days are coming, declares the Lord, when people will no longer say, As surely as the Lord lives, who brought the Israelites up out of Egypt. But they will say, As surely as the Lord lives, who brought the descendants of Israel up out of the land of the north and out of all the countries where he had banished them. Then they will live in their own land. Now this would be the gathering that God himself will physically do and is not to be confused with the Balfour Declaration gathering that occurred in 1948. Our next point is going to be very important as we will be tying this to Revelation showing that Gog and the Antichrist are one in the same. Son of Man, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, call out to every kind of bird and all the wild animals, assemble and come together from all around to the sacrifice I am preparing for you, the great sacrifice on the mountains of Israel. There you will eat flesh and drink blood. You will eat the flesh of the mighty men and drink the blood of the princes of the earth, as if they were rams and lambs, goats and bulls, all of them fattened animals from Bashan. At the sacrifice I am preparing for you, you will eat fat until you are glutted and drink blood till you are drunk. At my table, you will eat your fill of horses and riders, mighty men and soldiers of every kind, declares the Sovereign Lord. This is the great supper of God, in which Gog and his armies are slain and given as food to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. This only occurs at one time period. There is only one other place where the Great Supper of God is mentioned again, and that's in Revelation 19. In Revelation 19, Christ and the holy armies are preparing for a battle against the beast and the false prophet and their armies. I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse, whose rider is called Faithful and True, with justice he judges and wages war. His eyes are like blazing fire, and on his heads are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but he himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. The armies of heaven were following him, 
riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Coming out of his mouth is a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh he has this name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, who cried in a loud voice to come, gather together for the great supper of God, so that you may eat the flesh of kings, generals, and the mighty, of horses and their riders, and the flesh of all people, free and slave, great and small. Then I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to wage war against the rider on the horse and his army. But the beast was captured, and with it the false prophet who had performed signs on its behalf. With these signs he had deluded those who had received the mark of the beast and worshipped its image. The two of them were thrown alive into the fiery lake of burning sulphur. The rest were killed with the sword coming out of the mouth of the rider on the horse, and all the birds gorged themselves on their flesh. This is known as the Battle of Armageddon, and it also occurs in Ezekiel 38 and 39. At the end, Gog and his armies are left as food for the birds and the beast of the field. Just as the beast of Revelation, who is the Antichrist, and his armies are left as food for the birds and the wild beast of the field. In Ezekiel 38 and 39, God is present, and in Revelation 19, Christ is present in a robe dipped in blood. These are the same events. So, we have shown how the Prince to come is in fact another individual who comes after Christ, and he will destroy the city in the sanctuary. We have also shown how the Prince to come also matches Gog of Magog, who will come against Israel in future years to destroy the city when Israel becomes a nation again and inhabits the land that has been long desolate. Finally, we have correlated Gog to the Beast of Revelation and have shown how they both will be left as food for the birds and the wild beast of the field. Who are these individuals known as the beast, who is the antichrist and the false prophet in Revelation? We have found two people who perfectly match the antichrist and false prophet and it may come as a shock to some of you but these two perfectly match with two figures known in Islam as the al Mahdi and Isa. If you enjoyed today's video, give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel as we'll be releasing more videos like this in future. Thank you for listening to Glorified Message.